People, when was the moment you realized I'm better than this and left? Month ago. Left a 15-year job and 10-year relationship at the same time. Had a manager threaten to suspend me for a week because I left an hour late instead of staying three hours late. I'd told him several times beforehand that I could only stay one hour late that night to help out but he got pissed at me when it came time for me to leave and told me to do a bunch of shit that would have taken a minimum of an hour to do. After busting my ass there for four years I finally realized that they didn't care about me so I looked at him and said frick this dude I quit. I called the GM and told him I was never coming back. 10 tenths best decision of my life. When I was in midst of postpartum depression, in front of our infant and then five-year-old, my ex told me that maybe if I sucked his pee pee more often, I wouldn't be so sad. Happy to report that was over three years ago, and my kids and I are thriving with very, very minimal contact with him. I was babysitting for a family member and eventually became a full-time nanny. Despite several scholarships and a promising academic career I decided to forego college, and become a nanny for a family. I got paid like $20 per day. Worked 12 hours. Took care of four kids most still in diapers. What made me see the light finally was my aunt threatening to spank me. An 18 year old. Because I fed her kids the wrong thing. I was on my city's most wanted list, so I did what everyone in Alberta does when they have warrants and went to Kelowna, also fricked a carny in the Greyhound bathroom on the way. Not even kidding. On the run I fricked a carny in a Greyhound bathroom, as hookup stories go I think that's pretty unique if nothing else. So I was at this crack house listening to a million variations of the same story, I was hustling for crack on the causeway. When? And I had a moment of clarity, or an epiphany, or whatever you want to call it, and thought I'm never going to end up like these freaking losers. So I left. Like 10 to 12 on New Year's Eve. With my crack on the table, no less, which you'd have to have been an addict to understand the silly sort of pride I feel in that. I never smoked crack again. Eventually got arrested, and never committed another crime after that. I was working at Walmart after graduating with homers from college. Graduated the same year as the Great Recession. Got into a car accident and had to go to the hospital. I was being treated by a kind German doctor. He had to ask some questions to asses as I had a concussion or head injury. He asked what I did for a living. I told him. He told me I was too smart for that. Ten years later I went from working at Walmart and living with an abusive man, won't get into that, to know where I am a software automation tester with a nice house in a nice neighborhood with a wonderful husband and cut beagle. Sometimes all it takes is for someone to believe in you. My ex and I were in relationship for one and a half years. We fought daily. None of us knew why we were even together at one point. But none of us ever talked of breaking up, for whatever reason. I once heard him talking to one of our friends I treat her better than she deserves and that's why she fights me, because she knows where she belongs. Safe to say I broke up the next day. I'm an attorney. The Great Recession hit the legal market hard, and took far longer to recover than the rest of the market. Storied decades-long law firms either massively downsized, or shuttered their doors altogether. I graduated from law school during this time, and found myself competing with not just every other new graduate, but people who had years-long experience. Entry-level jobs were requiring 7 to 10 years experience. So I ended up doing contract work, which was miserable. I was good at it though, and I found an agency that loved my work. Eventually they asked me to be the project manager for a major case for a firm that was being forced to use a legal contracting agency by their client because it was cheaper, and they were very upset about it. But I did great work, the client was pleasantly shocked, and the agency was delighted. They told me they wanted to bring me on full-time as a project manager, and they would make it happen the next time a client needed that kind of work. In the meantime, I went back to being a regular contractor, only the agency would still treat me like an employee with authority asking me to keep an eye on the other contractors, report anything off to them, and asking me to run errands for them. I'd periodically ask about their promise to bring me on as an actual staff member, and they kept on telling me that they were just waiting for the right time. Meanwhile, their law firm clients loved my work, and kept on asking for me. This went on for a while. Then one day I found out they brought in someone far less experienced than me as the staff position that they had promised me, they hadn't even told me. I was stunned. Then one night the client I was working for took a bunch of us out for drinks one night. Several drinks into the night he revealed to me that he knew I wasn't hired for the job, that the agency knew I was popular with their clients and the job I was working in, and it was more profitable for them. He told me that I was better than that, and I should leave. I ended up talking to a friend who told me about an opening where he was. I got the job, and now I'm an actual practicing attorney in a job with benefits, and where I'm making a difference and doing good work. When I told the agency I was working for that I was leaving, they were a little stunned, but understood. It's just too bad I wasted so much time with them. I had super low self-esteem after high school and thought I had no place or chance at college. So, I took a job working as a framing carpenter right after high school. I learned a lot, had some good times, but had to work with one awful person. 
This job foreman was an abusive alcoholic that got off on making everybody else's day worse. He was so large he couldn't buckle a set of bags and wore suspenders attached the belt and just let them dangle. Well one job was a super tight lot and we could get the forklift where we needed to. We were at the point of setting the floor joist for the home. Since I was new guy, I was the human forklift. I had to lift every single 12 to 20 feet long 2 by 12 joist and set them in place while fat boss man and one other degenerate heckled me. I did it. Passes the hazing, but it was the moment I said screw this I'm going to college. Now I have a master's degree and a pretty good life. I probably own big boss man some gratitude, but screw that guy. When I was arguing with someone on YouTube and suddenly realized I'm at it for the last 3 hours. So sort of relevant. I find video games to be very much like a drug. They release all the good brain chemicals, and cause withdrawal-esque symptoms when you've been playing them and then stop. I used to play World of Warcraft. If video games are drugs, wow is heroin. I played for years. I realized I didn't even particularly enjoy playing, but still always came back to it. At one point Blizzard released an update that allowed players to have multiple builds on single characters. It cost a lot of in-game currency, and was a lot of work and a lot of time to make that much money. I said frick it and decided to buy the in-game currency from a third-party vendor. A big blizzard no-no. I got caught and subsequently banned. My immediate reaction was shock. I tried to think about how I could get my account back. Then I realized I spent real money, on fake money, for a game I'm paying monthly for already. I decided that maybe, this wasn't a healthy outlet, and that I should find a different game. My now ex-wife had cheated on me and got pregnant. This baby was going to be our second. She told me the truth after her lover threatened that he was going to tell me. She wasn't sure whose baby it was, mine or her lover's. It was pure hell, several of the most stressful and exhausting months of my life. My hair literally turned gray. I had decided I was going to do my best to make my marriage work, and I would have if the next part of the story hadn't happened. After the birth of the child, we decided to take a paternity test because her lover wouldn't leave her alone. We ordered the at-home paternity test, and this is where it gets even more fricked up. This is the lie that broke the camel's back. She performed the at-home paternity test when I was at work, but instead of swabbing the new baby's cheek, she swabbed our first child's cheek. The paternity test came back 100% that the baby was mine. I felt a relief like I never knew. Then she was sued by her lover for a paternity test. She complied and the baby is actually his. That was the moment I realized, I'm better than this and kicked her ass out. My ex-BF, while we were dating of course, he had stealthed me, backed me into a corner where my best option was to get the abortion he was pressuring me to get anyway, he'd tell me to do it whenever he got mad at me but when we were okay he would rub my belly and act like he was excited for my 8-week pregnancy. Ew. Anyway, a couple months after the termination, we were arguing and I reminded him that he is the reason I had to have an abortion and he put me in that situation, he had removed a condom during sex. He got mad at me saying how dare I accuse him of murdering his baby. FFS. I grabbed all my stuff and walked out. Turned back and knocked on the door one last time. Took a deep breath and told him I'm not doing this anymore. Best decision I made for myself. Didn't leave physically, but instead hung up. Growing up my parents always raised me to be perfect. That included the brains and brawns. I couldn't get lower than a 75% on my tests or assignments or else I would get yelled at. This year, pretty recently actually, I received a 74%. I knew they were gonna be upset but I was actually upset myself because I thought I would get a lot higher, though that isn't a bad mark, of course. Anyways, when I got home I was crying. My mom seemed pretty worried until I told her what was wrong. She yelled at me and put my dad on the phone so I could tell him what I did wrong. It was at that moment that I realized how bullshit this all was and I hung up, walked out of my room and went to my friend's house for the night. When I lost my third game of Monopoly against my toddler nephews. Years ago I worked at Walmart. Went on lunch break. Was two minutes late getting back because I went to the restroom. Got written up and told to end my shift and go home because I stole time. They said I could come back the next week and talk to management about keeping my job. I told the manger to frick off threw my name tag at him and walked out the door. Frick that place. I was involved with a friend I had known for 13 years or so. I was falling in love with her. She would vanish here and there and then come back to tell me how she was falling back in love with a cocaine addict who was treating her like absolute shit. We dated for three days, and I had decided to get a gym membership and work out so I could be in better shape for her. When I first met her I was thin and good looking, but just a year ago I was well over 320 pounds. I was depressed, slow, and tired all the time but she made me want to be a better person for her, her daughter and myself. When I sent her a before photo shirtless she ended the relationship. She said she wanted someone who was healthy. I get it, but don't tell me some nonsense about how. You want a healthy person. Tell me you're not into someone who's overweight. Anyway, she went back to the coke head and would still call me crying about how he was awful to her. 
He had tattoos on his face and the whole bit. After many many weeks of her telling me I was lying about my PP size, my weight, and my general intentions I messaged her and told her I could never speak with her again. As of now, I am training for a physique competition early 2023 and lost over 70 pounds I'm also in the process of buying a private music school I've been teaching at and I owe part of this to her. I almost feel indebted that she made me want something better and somehow I owe her my loyalty and love. But I don't. I think she was only in my life at that time to show me I could do better. I was better than that, and I left. Pulling deliveries for a hardware store that should be a two to three person job, I twisted my ankle the day before and when I got in from walking to find my deliveries tampered with and incomplete, I knew that I was leaving and never looking back that morning. I left the first 16 minutes of that shift, and I'm glad I did. My physical and mental health is more important than being praised as a prized workhorse. I worked at a corporate restaurant that was absolutely ghetto as a server. I've always been a great server, but the last straw was when an obese teen went to the bathroom and absolutely demolished the toilet with his pants down, stall door open, and parent encouraging him. When they were done, bathroom smell was unbearable and there was no more paper at all. The next week I started applying at different restaurants. Now work at a fine dining restaurant making 350 in tips a night. My former boss was very emotionally invasive. Some of the things she said were I'm gonna build you up, tell you you're doing a good job, and as soon as you feel confident I'm gonna break you down, if you ever try to quit, I know your dad and I'll come to your house and drag you back by your hair, and come with me you look like you need to cry she then brought me to her office and pried into my personal life until I was able to force a tear, she then said okay good I'll leave you in here for a few minutes, when you're done crying get back to work. It wasn't until my mom wanted to come visit me at work that I realized I didn't want her to see how my boss treated me. My mom poured me a shot and cheered when I told her I had quit. My ex accidentally called me last night drunk, looking for her cousin. All the flashbacks of her alcoholism and emotional unavailability, made realize right then, that I had made a good choice dumping her. I was working in a factory when my boss was being quite a bit abusive, going so far to threaten to actually beat my ass. I realized that I needed a change, got into computers and landed a much higher pay and lower stress job. After a threesome when I was younger. I knew damn well not to go to the weedman's house, I was invited, but I went that night anyways. I really just wanted to smoke weed and drink, but I knew it came with the price of my pussy, I was broke back then. So I was doing one guy and next thing you know another one came up right behind me. I remember thinking all this just to get high? As I let this random person start pounding away from the back. Woke up the next day feeling empty and then realized I'm better than this. Thank God I changed. I grew up on the south side of Chicago and was hanging out with some really bad people. My breaking point was when I watched my best friend chase after someone with a knife because he felt they disrespected him. I didn't want that life, I didn't want to end up another statistic, another kid taken from his mother because of stupid shit like that. Plus I was just accepted too. One of the best private high schools in the city and I didn't want to throw that opportunity away. I spoke with a few times after that, but I never saw him again. Every once in a while I google him though and he has been in and out of jail since then and currently serving time until 2023. Breaks my heart because I have such fond memories from our chillhood like going to Yogi Bear Jellystone Park every summer, geeking out over Star Wars and The Simpsons, all the sleepovers, and so many more. I could have easily gone down the same path and I'm so glad that I had the sense to get off of it. When I caught him once again trying to cheat on me. He'd left his computer on and there was a Craigslist reply for a classified post titled M4M for discreet sucking. I wrote out a few post-it notes, stuck them on the monitor, gathered all the stuff I had at his place into a trash bag and hauled it on a couple mile walk to my job site, didn't have a car at the time. He tried to say that the girl he tried to cheat on me with just prior was angry that he rejected her and made a revenge post with his email and number, as if I was too much of an idiot to know that you have to publish a CL ad through your own email. I was in college far away from home. I was homesick so I decided to pledge a fraternity. I was about two weeks into the process and, while there wasn't any physical abuse, it was very demeaning. I thought about my grandpa, who basically raised me, and realized he would be ashamed I would pay for people to treat me this way just to make friends. Drop that day. When my boss watched a coworker come at me with a knife and then told me I should be nicer to her as she's going through a really rough time. I just finally was done and left. I found a much better job that I was sad to leave but I'm now in college full time and much happier. I got tired of trying to make plans with my friend being akin to pulling teeth. Once, she cancelled our plans for me to come over and watch movies because she was sick, only for me to run into her at a shopping mall a few hours later with a friend. She was sick, I could see it in her face and hear it in her voice, but I was so pissed. She tried playing it off and said that her friend forced her. That wasn't the straw that broke the camel's back, but it definitely made me very aware of what she thought of our friendship. After her always being too busy or too tired to hang out but then seeing her post pictures going to friends parties and other crap, 
I finally just up and blocked her on everything. She got all pissy and said I should understand how stressful things are or some shit and I just pointed out the fact that I'd seen her three times, maybe even just two, in the last year and a half, yet she was hanging out with these other friends constantly and then blocked her again. Another nasty comment about my body, so I dumped my emotionally abusive, bumhole, ex-boyfriend. I went to sleep and walked out the next morning. Nasty jokes about my appearance, body and just me as person, whilst openly and inappropriately complimenting and ogling other girls for example frick me look at her and uncomfortable staring for long periods. Not to mention the controlling and coercive behavior, 7 years. Vile man for what he has made me think of myself. Still early days, but I pray that I eventually get over it and become myself again. I went to a bar and started flirting with a girl I thought was pretty. A guy came up to me and said he has already been talking to her so don't bother. I didn't listen or care, then he started with the name calling and bullying. Then an hour later he wanted to fist fight over a girl neither one of us knew. My exact thought was, what am I doing, so I just packed it up and went home. Basically I gave him all of me. I did everything that I could to help build him up. To help him be whoever it was that he wanted to, be. And by the end of the relationship he had lied, cheated, etc. I felt like I had given him all of my goodness, all of my peace, all of my faith, and I was left feeling empty and anxious. So much so, that when he did lie or cheat I would actually beg for him to stay. And that's crazy. Took me a long time to realize that's not love. Not only did I feel like I lost pieces of myself, but I also lost my apartment, my car, and eventually my job. Which is a really long story. When I had finally decided that I had enough was when he picked me up from work one night I was tired, stressed, almost in tears. And right before we walked into the house he turned and looked at me and said I don't know if I'll ever love you. And for the first time in three years I suddenly felt like I knew what I was going to do. I wasn't going to beg him anymore, I wasn't going to give up my life anymore, I wasn't going to sleep in a freaking closet because he didn't want his daughter to see me in the house, even though I paid for the house. I know that he thought I was going to run after him that night, but I didn't. And when I left him he cried. I told him that his tears were nothing compared to the thousands I shed for him. Now he had to move back in with his mom. And I know the sleeping in a closet is literally batshit crazy, but I was too far gone to understand just how messed up it was. It was only when she came home from her mom's house and I thought I was doing the right thing at the time. That shit crazy. My ex threatened to crash the car because we couldn't find food to eat at 2 a.m. When I got visibly upset, he yelled at me. I don't even think it was more than a day later that I called my dad and told him how badly I wanted out. Within a couple weeks, I got my ass out of there.